Hello, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Raw Talk Podcast, where we gonna talk that talk. And tonight, man, we got a definitely special show. We got a special guest tonight pulling up. My guy Z Mills gonna be pulling up. We gonna have a lot of great conversations about what he got going on. But before we talk about that, man, before he gets in our room, I do want to let y'all know to make sure y'all pull up to the Roth Talk Podcast on YouTube, man. We on YouTube. Go up there and check out interviews from before. So make sure you pull it up to the, you know what I mean? To the YouTube, hit subscribe, hit that like button, hit that comment button, you know what I mean? Comment, show a brother some love because I'm in season two, man. So hello, hello. What's going on, my guy? What's up, brother? How we doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Man, you know what? It's just another day in paradise. Just another day in paradise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bro. Man, let me go ahead and welcome the show because we right on time, my guy. So it was, hey, it was perfect to start right now, my guy. So hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Raw Talk Podcast where we talk that talk. And tonight, man, I got the special guest in the building. I got my guy, Zemel, in the building. We got a lot of great things to talk about, man. We're going to talk about this fire music he got out, and we definitely going to talk about his career and everything else. But make sure y'all go ahead and follow my guy. Make sure you follow me. Make sure you go over to YouTube and check out my other interviews on Raw Talk Podcast, man. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get this thing cranked up, man. So Zemel, man, I always like to have my, art, uh, my guests start out and tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, the name is Emil. It's Joyous Melodies in Hebrew. I am from Dallas, Texas. I am the creator of Put Jazz. Uh, I took smooth jazz, smooth R&B, neo soul, a little spoken word, sprinkle them all together, put them in a pot, in a blend, and we call that Put Jazz. Mm. And I perform live, and the music is everywhere. Uh, and the new single that's coming out on friday stir it up will be on all your digital platforms and so i'm an artist i'm a performer speaker motivation speaker spoken word artist poet author all of the above <laughs> yes sir yes sir <laughs> well we definitely gonna stir it up tonight my guy we definitely gonna oh, talk about the single we definitely gonna talk about that but man i always like to take it from the beginning man because a lot of times the beginning you know how we started our you know journey led us to where we at now man so i always start out with the question is now did you ever sing in church as a youngin did you do music at an early age or uh, you know tell us about a young zamil back in the day there oh man yes and yes uh <laughs> you know the artists that you have that come on uh, started out in the church and and sang for a long time. Started writing when I was six years old, and mm. been writing and and performing ever since. But did not do anything with the gift until decades later, until okay. I was actually looking at moving on to the next phase of my life. But I've been writing and the poetry and the song and the music. I've been doing that since I was in elementary school. Okay, okay. Well, let's, let's keep talking about the elementary school. Do, now, do you remember some of those songs that kind of inspired you back then or the, the songs that just, you know, resonated with you at that young age? Oh, man, that's a great question because I, I, I tell you, one of, the, one of the greatest songs that moved me was, uh, was uh, Donny Hathaway. Man, mm. you know, one day we'll all be free. Yes, sir. And and, uh, you know, Donny Hathaway was a phenomenal artist, you know, and, you know, back in the day and when I was young, you know, we had all the groups, we had the Temptations, Four Tops, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, the Stylistics, that takes you into the 70s, but then, you know, in the 60s, you know, you had, uh, you know, my father, which is where I got the gift from, was with a group called The Festivals, and uh, they mm. had a hit, uh, We're Gonna Make It, uh, back in the day, in Green Grows, The Lilacs, and so I was a part of all of that, that music and that whole scene, but the inspiration just came from, you know, Donny Hathaway, uh, Lil Stevie Wonder, you know, and, uh, you know, one of, the, one of my songs about him way back in the day, like, you, you too young to even know about this. <laughs> he did a cut called I Was Made to Love Her, you know, you know, mm. I, 
to worship and adore. And he did a cut called, I don't know why I love you. <laughs> mm, mm. So that's, that, that takes you way, way back. So the lyrics and the words of what those guys and all of those artists wrote back in the day was really, really inspirational and what touched me and moved me. And with the gift that I was given to take words and hear melodies, I hear words, when I hear words, I, I hear melodies, I hear notes and I hear beats and I hear things like that. And I take that and I interpret it into my own way. And if I don't mess it up when it comes from the inspiration, then we're good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then it comes out how it's supposed to come out. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we can mess it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I didn't mess up. Well, I won't say we. I won't put you in there. I'm just saying. Oh, no, no. I'm going to tell you. I didn't mess up some stuff, too. It's I can, okay. mess, I can mess it up. <laughs> no, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Well, let's, let's continue on that, uh, that conversation there. Now, you was writing. Now, do you remember what you was writing about? Do you remember the content or? You know, were you, was it like little, you know, poems on, uh, you know, about life? Like, let's talk about your writing at an early age. Dude, okay, you're going to really trip out, dude. I won a poetry contest when I was six years old in the first grade. It's a citywide mm. poetry contest. And I had an opportunity to go to Mesquite, which, you know, is outside of Dallas. It was, it's a part of Dallas, a city. And uh, went to Mesquite, and I wrote a poem called the Little Mermaid. <laughs> um, we were being we were being taught in class, and so I actually wrote a poem about that. Mm. But the 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 biggest poem that moved me when I was very young was just it was a liner. It was says, um, and she wrote to me, "I smile when I hear your thoughts in my head." Mm. And someone said that to me, and then I put that in a poem when I was six or seven years old and Jeez. because I was putting rhymes together. And so it was rhymes about, you know, yeah, I started out with you love me, check the box, you know, I'm yeah. a, oh, <laughs> what can I say? You make my day, you know what I'm saying? So those kind of things, it was the initial, um, the genesis of love as I had come to know it at that point in my life. And, and, and I was introduced to it through just expression, through just the words and through uh, gestures. So that's what it was. It started out with puppy love. It started out with just life in general. And then it, it morphed into what it is today. Okay, okay, okay. All right, nah, definitely, man. That's why I, I love to start at the beginning, like you said, man, the beginning, the, the genesis of it, because later on you start to realize, like, man, I went through that or I had that experience, so now I can use that later on in life. So, man, that, that's super dope, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it all comes, you know, and it's amazing how you hear that cliche that it all comes full circle. Yeah, but oh, yeah. it really does. Yes, you know, sir. think about where you started to where you are now and how you got there. You know, you think about the, the, the road, you know, the bumps in the road that you thought were road stops, but you stepped over them or you ran over them to get to where you are now because you refused to let that deny you to where you wanted to go. So you, you get to that place. And so you are exactly right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Well, let's keep this story cooking, man, because I'm excited to hear you know what I mean? Because at six years old, you was writing some, you know what I mean? You was writing some stuff. So let's talk about, all right, let's move on to middle school. Now, you, you know what I mean? Now, middle school, now, were you ever in a singing group? Did you do any singing? Oh. Or were you undercover? Like, you know what I mean? Did oh. you have any talents like that? Come on now, come on now. Let me, <laughs> let me just say something. It's a funny story that you should mention that about middle school, right? So in the eighth grade, uh, I was on a talent show, and I can tell you the song we sang, and the girls went crazy. I was with a group, and, I, and well, first I did it by myself because the guys who I was with, I won't call their names, but I know all <laughs> of them. They were scared to get on stage with me, and I, you know, mm. I ain't about it. So got on the stage, I sang "Wildflower" by, mm. and we, yes, cried, sir. right, and then to further to go further in the ninth grade. Uh, at Oliver Wendell Holmes, the eighth grade, I was at Sequoia uh, in Dallas, in West Dallas. And then in the ninth grade, I was at Oliver Wendell Holmes. And on the talent show, I sang Love Don't Love Nobody. By mm. And I backed it up with Heavy Falling Out by the Stylistics. It was over. 
And when I hit the high note, I hit this high note at the end of Heavy Falling Out, right? And this girl came from the back of the auditorium and ran up to the stage to try to grab me. And I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right here. <laughs> oh, man, boy, that was your first time feeling like a superstar right there, man. Let me tell you something. It was, uh, it was it was an exhilarating evening. It really, really was an exhilarating evening. So I can remember it just like it was on yesterday. So mm -hmm. I was in the choir. We did all those things in the school choir and in the group. The group was called Spectrum. And, uh, you know, we did talent shows and we performed. We had all the little moves and we had all the things. We did all that stuff, man. And so it was just, it was absolutely crazy, but it, it was fun. No, man, that sounds like a dope story, man. Especially you were surprised. You know, you got somebody running from the back of the house. <laughs> like, oh, I, what's about to happen? <laughs> I can see her now. Can't say her name on this deal. <laughs> true story. Got up out of her from the back of the from the back of the auditorium. You don't understand what I'm saying. From the no, back. I mean, of she had to go past a lot of people just to come up there to jump on man boy you must be man you must be singing your tail oh my god you must be doing it, your thing out there you know what man it was it was a lot of fun man you know back then it was you know we, we were in a different space in, in that time yeah. 1974 dude it was we we were in a different we were in a different space you know we were just on the other side of coolie high man you know what mm, i mean mm, yes sir Something about that too but we, we were i just, know about that now no, no, I'm, on, a little, I'm a little bum now I, I love yeah I, I watch a lot of movies so yes yeah, sir i definitely know about cool guy yeah so it was good man so those were good days those were really really good days and i did a lot of writing uh a lot of poetry uh back then a lot of it was it it was it was one day it'd be poetry and, mm -hmm. and another day it'd be a song and like I said earlier, I hear melodies, and sometimes it's just the melody, sometimes it's just the word, sometimes it's just the title, sometimes it's just the hook. You have to go to it, and 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 you gotta write it down and do something with it in that moment, or you lose it. Or you lose it. That's what they say. That's what a lot of the great writers say. You gotta write it down, or you might lose it. So that's not a they say. That's a the truth. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the that's the gospel. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, let's. So let's. I'm definitely ready to hear about high school. So if you ended eighth grade like that, let's go ahead and transition over to high school now. Well, let, let me just say this: in high school, man, it was really, really fun because uh, my senior year in high school, I was blessed to have the opportunity to write our class a song. Mm. So Franklin D. Roosevelt and I wrote our class song to "The Closer I Get to You." by Donny Hathaway, you know, Roberta Flack, The Closer I Get to You. And uh, it was uh, two or three submissions, and it was really special because, you know, they, the class got a chance to choose which song they wanted. Mm. So my mm -hmm. song ended up getting voted for, and it was really, really good. I had a, a friend of mine, a classmate, uh, Michael Hempel, I'll never forget him. He wrote a song. He did his to Always and Forever by Heatwave. Mm. Really, really nice. He was really, really good. And I was fortunate enough that, that the class uh, chose my song. So we sang the song for graduation. We sang the song for awards day and mm -hmm. we for uh, uh, recognition day. But one of the craziest moments in high school, craziest moment, we, uh, we had a senior talent show and we were Parliament Funkadelic, right? <laughs> Friend of mine, did, I call him. He don't care. I, I call his name. Dad Robinson was George Clinton. I was Bootsy, and <laughs> you know, I had the Funkenstein, and we had Sir Nose Devoid of Funk. We had the the little fake cardboard spaceship come out, <laughs> <laughs> and we did. We probably played flashlight for like thirty minutes, dude. The principal mm. had to say cut because we were born <laughs> first. He said cut. We're going in, for, so we had to cut it off, man. So no. High school, in terms of that, uh, was just amazing. We were in the uh, senior choir uh, mm -hmm. in high school as well, and we went down to Houston and Austin. We did all those things, man, got wands, uh, had a phenomenal choir. There were, there were an incredible amount of talented people at Roosevelt, and mm -hmm. uh, from, from the choir to the football team, basketball team, so all of those things were in there, and uh, we, we had an amazing, amazing amazing time amazing senior year you know when you think mm. you know in terms of just 
uh, what we did and what we accomplished. And my part in, in all of that was football, track, uh, choir, and again, you know, again, honored to write the class song that, that you know, we still sing today, you know. That's so fire. Later. That's fire, man. You was able to get the class song, man. Like you said, that's it. You're a legend for that, my guy, because, you know, everybody's singing what you wrote. So, then, hello. For the last 45 years, thank you very much. Hello. Pop your collar, my guy. Yeah, this, this is where you got to pop your collar. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. That was, and, I, and tonight, you know, who knew? Tonight, I actually put on Roosevelt Color. So, mm, hello. Out there who will see this, they'll see that I'm also sporting Roosevelt Colors tonight. That's right, man. Well, you got hey, you got a rep, man, because you did something that, of course, you had other people that were trying to do it. But um, let's talk about, well, I, I want to talk about that song really quick before we move on. Uh, because what was your motivation behind writing the song? And what made you choose that particular uh, record to, you know, to go with that uh, song? That's an excellent question. Uh, the class of 77. Uh, from Roosevelt, which was a very, very together class, man. They did a, they did a song that was kind of like a duet, and it was like by the time I think it was to by the time I get to Phoenix, and it was like a duet. And I wanted a song where the women sang one part and the guys sang one part. And when I heard "The Closer I Get to You," and I thought about you know all the words, and I can I can tell you, uh, we shared a lot, and I said we accomplished a lot that year. And so the song was, you know, the memories that we shared makes it hard to say the time has finally come, you know, that we must say goodbye. And then the guys come in, the guys come in and say, even though we go, we want everyone to know we did our very best to make you all proud to say that once we pass this way. So it was like, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was the everything that we did, the championships that we won in football, the scores that we got in uh, high school from the choir uh it was just the, the the scholars the the scholarships and you know on my team you know i had a bunch of guys get scholarships that year to, to play football you know football basketball and track and a lot of people went on to do really 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 well so the song was written by what we accomplished as a class of 1978 at franklin d roosevelt that the, the class actually wrote the song. I was just the facilitator of how it was mm. in paper. But the class wrote that song and seeing us how we did it, afros and all, you know. <laughs> Hello. It, so it was it was an easy song to write based on what we accomplished a, a, as, as a group of young people. Man, that is fire, man. That is fire, man. Because like you said, to see your classmates excelling Everybody seeming like it's everybody season. We win and we about to go on and do big things. And it's just that energy and vibe of the, uh, like you said, of that senior class. So yeah, no. I feel you on that, my guy. I feel you on that, man. Well, let's let's continue the story, man. We we had a good point right now. We had a good point right now. So let's talk about after high school, man. So did you go to college? Did you go? You know what? What did you do after school? Oh wow. <laughs> whole thing you know this is probably one of the better smoother uh you know interesting more interesting interviews that i've done in a long time so, uh, <laughs> college was was great because my senior year i was being recruited to play football mm. and i was fortunate and blessed to be able to go anywhere i wanted to go in the country academically and uh i ended up going to smu to mm. on a scholarship to play football so that was that was a really really uh you know great experience uh, but coming out of high school is a difficult thing. This is where the story kind of turns a little bit. Like when I got there, there were like 11 running backs um, that were at SMU. And by the time we finished the spring, there were only three that were left. And uh, the following year, Hall of Fame running back Eric Dickerson came to SMU. Great American Charles Wagner came to SMU. All-American Craig James came to SMU. So we ended up, you know, I ended up, all of the guys who were there at the very beginning, though we worked very hard in there, we ended up getting moved to you know, as the as the scout team, and we ended up being third string and still on the team. But, you know, those guys, they were All-American Hall of Famers. 
you know, they were, they, they, who, they were who they were. They were, yep. They were the best of the best of the best. Uh, and Eric was probably the best I've ever seen in, in, in college, particularly at that running back position. And, and he and I are still friends now. And he's, again, Hall of Famer and, and done a million, million different things. And, and so for the first time in my life, the talent alone was not enough. Mm. For the first time in my life, I had to look back at, okay, hey, look, this is somebody that can run faster, jump higher, and do all of those things. And before that, everything came, you know, really kind of easy. And I remember busting my butt myself and, and a good friend, Charles Driven, who was uh, my roommate, who ended up being Eric's best friend. Uh, from Indian Town, Florida. Uh, shout, out, shout out to him, dude. They only had one red light in his his system. <laughs> they had one red light. <laughs> but the 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 journey to get through SMU uh, was historical in terms of what that made me feel and having to deal with having to redirect my energy. So I mm. ended up being needing twelve hours to get two degrees. And, and, and left in 1983 and then went to work for a, the largest transportation company in the world. Did not finish, but I came back 14 years later to get my degree in economics. And so that journey, that journey at SMU, you know, really helped mold me to, it, 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 it shaped me like that diamond in the fire, you know, and that, and that rough thing really, really uh, did a number on who I was and who I became as a person. And I ended up, you know, from that journey and what I learned through, you know, SMU and, and everything that I went through there, coming back, getting that degree in economics, getting those, you know, I had to make the, the, the counselor say, well, you know, you're going to have to cost your GPA, you know, you're going to have to make, you know, at least six A's just to graduate. You know what? I made 10. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Dude, I was on full scholarship. It was a different deal. So when I went back, I had to pay for it. You know, the company. Right. <laughs> to go there too. But that whole journey helped shape me, man. And so it's a lot different when you have to pay for it yourself. And and so you look at it a lot. So, uh, you know, I know that's a, a that's a long way around the building to answer that question totally. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of struck a chord that I hadn't been to. That's a place that I hadn't been to in a very, very long time. And, and I don't share or have not shared that a lot, you know, in wow. terms of having these kinds of conversations. That's the honest truth. Well, well, man, I appreciate, you know what I'm saying? We having that kind of vibe and conversation, man, because you said some gems in there because a lot of times when you're going through it, it, it feels horrible. It feels like it's the worst thing in the world. But when you're able to sit back and look at this, you know, going through it it's like wow man like that changed like you said that changed you that was a course of event that changed you so nah man now where let me ask you this though were you writing music and doing your thing still during that time or were you strictly football and you know college during that time i was still writing um i had you know i was writing uh, and because the inspiration comes every day on a daily basis you know i was i was still writing uh but not with the not with the depth of, of of what it was that I actually matured in my writing to do later on. But I was still writing. There were still songs. There were songs all the way through high school. There were songs all the way through college. There were songs all the way, songs and poems. That's probably thousands of songs and poems that I've written that, like I said, until, you know, I was at that position at my job like 15 years ago. Uh, it may not have been 15 years, but some time ago, they, they were talking about transitioning. Mm -hmm. and, and I made the cut during that transition, quote unquote, period and, and was able to stay. And again, ended up being there for 40 years. And I woke up one day, January 1st, my birthday, right? I woke up uh -huh. one day, I just, just reached the age of silver. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I woke up and something in me said it's time and I and I and I took all of the music I took all of the songs all the stuff from college dusted off all of the notebooks all of the scrapbooks and then started organizing I did love and that's what how my books are there, there's a thought there's a book thoughts and vision there's the book love unleashed right poetry books and all of my books are love life and inspiration 
Mm-hmm. The love mm-hmm. on has a, has a chapter on intimacy, but all of them have those three components, and I break everything that I do down in those segments. Man, that geez, that's where we need. Let's pick up from right there, man, because I need to. I might need that book, love for the, you know, what I mean, for my lady. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> You go to Love Unleashed, right? Mm-hmm. And you open up that Love Unleashed. I challenge you. I- I'll send it to you. And Hello. thank you. Let me stop for a moment and say thank you. I want to thank Desiree Benson, Desiree L. Benson PR for hooking us up. And then thank you for having me on this platform uh, because she's fire also. Yes, she uh, is. Yes, yes, she is. But if you go to, you know, in the Love Unleashed, Man, you go to you go to chapter one in Love Unleashed. I, I challenge you to just turn any page. I'm not gonna even just pick a poem. Just pick one. Okay. And you share that, man. And it's like it's it's over. Like when the guy I, I like that. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Hold up. <laughs> when the guy comes to my show, right? They will tell you, I'm your setup guy. I'm Magic Johnson. You James Worthy. Hello. Hello, that I need the oop. Just throw it in just throw me the oop. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, my guy. That cause, cause listen, sometimes um you you know, as a as a guy, you might not have the words to say what you need to say. So it's it's players like you that we need. We need somebody like you to be the conduit, you know what I mean? To, to say what we want to say. You know what I mean? So uh, you know what I in the last show I so I tell the guys, I'm here for you, right? I'm here. I'm here on your behalf, and also at, at the beginning of every show, right? I I recognize the men first because I want them. I, I don't. You know, we let's just be real. Can we be real for? Come, come on, on, this is what we talk that talk. This is what is we it, talk the talk. Let's go. Sometimes you know we we have to have that macho thing going, you know, whatever, and and and, and, and you know, I, you know what, it, and it has to be, you know, we have to have it on full tilt all the time. And what I have them do at the beginning of every show, I have all the men stand up, and then I recognize them, and it, and I recognize them with a poem of empowerment. I, I recognize them with a poem of you know, of, of, of perseverance, of strength, of appreciation, you know, just, just if, can I give you like a couple of lines of what I say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I, when I rise up, I say, I say to my brothers, this is, this is why I have you to stand. Because when a black man stands, he makes standing up look smooth because the swag in his DNA is gifted with smooth. When a black man stands, it's like the roar of a lion with 500 years of our ancestors screaming, shouting, I am the original man, and yes, I am black. I'm cut from the cloth of pharaohs, but this country does not teach our children that. When a black man stands, it's like rhythm uncoil, the strength of kings like Shaka Zulu and Mansa Musa with beats of broken shackle carving the atmosphere with his stature. The room is a typhoon whose focus has been captured. You see, so I want you to walk out there beat like I'm the shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling like that now, right now. You know what I'm like, saying? Hello, hello. When I'm saying hello, and so when I so when we when we start there with how we feel about ourselves and mentally and emotionally and our mindset is there. When I get to that love stuff, you know, they grabbing hold to the girls, you know, whatever, because we used to start that show out. It's a Men's for Jazz Experience show, right? At the very beginning, when I started this thing, like, eight or nine years ago, it was like 90% women. Mm-hmm. You know? And, you know, it was just, it, it was crazy. And now, you know, in the last show, the last show that we did, man, it was, it was, it was couples everywhere. Those guys are trying to go in there and see it because they know, all I have to do is get to the house. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> we, we, this is all, it's all laid out. It's all laid out, man. So, and we run the gambit, you know, when it, with incredible musicians who, who, who take the music uh, that I thought of and created and the melodies. And you got Joe McCray, you got Fulton Turnage, you got uh, Jaquita, uh, Jaquita Jones, she's a sister that plays drums for me at Will Books on bass. Uh, another guy, producer, who's done some stuff with me, who's Lenny Nance, he's done some things with me. And it's just an amazing, you know, 
it's 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 an entertaining and magical evening so when you talk about all of the writing i took all of that writing from all of those years from all of those moments from everything that i've experienced about love from everything that i've experienced in life and it's in that show you know what i'm saying so it's not just you can't put me in a box because it's 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 inspirational it's motivational it's romantic it's sensual it's seductive not no raunchy no p no d no f <laughs> i'm not I, i'm no shade on those that do i'm just saying for me that's not there mm -hmm. but it is it takes you it takes you to that place though you know wh wherever it is and so what i try to do is i take all those life experiences all the way all that writing through all the time and we put it in a show and, and we make moments magical man that shows man i'm gonna have to pull up to the show man I, you, you still gotta send me the book but i gotta come to the show you got yo dude, we we are working uh right now on finishing up the editing from the last show that we did and so i now have a total appreciation for editors in hollywood because i i you know I, i've worn my poor editor out because i've seen <laughs> seven times you know we've been editing for for a year you know seconds <laughs> and so milliseconds action mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's, it's been a labor of love but uh i'm blessed i am blessed yes sir well man let, let's pick up man listen because i'm i'm just excited to hear about this single but hope before we get there let's talk a little bit about the motivation behind you starting this show and how did you get your band together because um i know it takes a dope band to keep the show cooking and rolling so um let's talk about your motivation for even starting this and then how did you, you get your band together man great question uh got an opportunity to as i said i woke up one day and i wanted to do something with all the music and all the songs uh, a friend of mine gave me a birthday gift a gift card to uh this artist boot camp and this was joe mccray and so he was running it with his partner so i met joe and when i first met joe i told him i wanted to do all he says this in the show and he teases me about this all, all the time i won't say exactly what he said we said it's just another so-and-so with a drink you know because <laughs> that, he didn't know me from anybody but i'm mean, asking look dude, this is what i want to do we're going to write a song in every different genre and and smooth r b and neo soul and and and, and poetry we're going to do all of that we're going to put music too we're going to do all of that I'm going to do books and I'm going to do shirts and I'm going to do merch. And he, he looked at me like, this, who is this right here? We had never met, but I had already decided that. I had not done any of that yet. But mm. when I met him, I told him that's what I was going to do. And then we done it. Now, now it's all real. And so he, it started with him, did some work with an incredible artist by the name of Joseph Fincelli. Who did some stuff on the music? Who did some stuff on the time and CD? Uh, my son, Umbre the Great, who's in the music, who's very gifted, who's an incredible singer. Uh, Dion Q, I am Dion Q. She's a, she's an incredible singer. Um, Ricky James, incredible singer. Lala J, incredible singer. So all of these people, you know, we just kind of came together uh, for the first big Zamil for Jazz experience because I saw in them how i wanted my songs and music to be presented mm, mm. not the band player or the bass player or the piano player but i hear the melodies and so joe will go to the piano i say joe i want to do 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 or the bass player to do 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 <laughs> player go do 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 and then joe will put the hall you know give it all together and i've said this a million times i give him a note and he gives me a symphony mm. He pulls the band together based on, you know, his connections and then what he hears. And he writes the music, whether it's him or Lenny, writes the music based on what I hear. And I'll sit down and then they'll play it. And then I'll say, no, nope, that's not it. No, nope, that's not it. Oh, oh, okay, now that's it. That's it. <laughs> if it's off one note, you know, it's, it's a different deal because their interpretation of what I hear, you know, sometimes we're different. Mm -hmm. and. But when we are on the same page, when we oh, hear, yeah. when we hear the same thing, it's magic. Man, hello, that chemistry, man, it's a big piece to it, man. And like you said, you're trying to express something that you hear 
and then they're trying to emulate it. So yeah, man, that could be a process, but you guys got it sounding good, man, because I definitely heard the music. Y'all sounding good over there, man. So no, uh, it's it's a, yeah, no, it's it, I've been very, very blessed. They're incredible artists, incredible, incredibly talented professionals. Uh, each and every single one of them, man. They're all just they're, they're all phenomenal. Oh man, definitely, definitely. Well, man, this is a perfect time to talk about this new single that's dropping in a couple of days, man. So again, tell us about the title. How did you come up with the title? And then, you know, let's talk about this big release. Man, okay. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. Now, this was what, uh, th this is what was cool about that. I was up, you know, I was listening to some old albums and I was going through some albums, right? And I was looking through No Parking on the Dance Floor, The Midnight Star, The Barcades, The Cameo. And, you know, back in the day, it was everything. Doom, 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 doom. You know, the bass, you know, was. And so I said to myself, self I said, how <laughs> would it be, you know, to have this own groove, have my own groove, right? And so I was just sitting there in the group, and, and the groove came. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, 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 doom, 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 and then I was just, and I just started going with that. So it started with that, and then, and then the hook came, uh, the hook came when it just, doom, doom, doom. and so when I heard the hook, I told you when I hear words, I hear words, I see words when I hear melody, and mm -hmm. to me, doom, 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 it says, stir it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how it began. And so we started with that. Call Lenny up, said, dude, I gotta get with you on this. And we gotta we gotta get okay, we gotta get to work on this. And the the dance or the move, you know, kind of came, you know, with it because it seemed like just a real natural thing to do. Because when you stir it up, I mean that just you know, that just brings to mind a whole lot of things, right? You mm -hmm. think mom stirring up that cake batter, you talk Hello. about guys used to yeah, Pat, you talking about when you talking about stirring it up, I mean that's just I mean that's that's just a simple thing, but it's just so powerful because you can go so many directions with it. And uh we took it and uh Daryl Good, guy with Daryl Good, he's a mix master engineer, and uh, Dr. J. Julius uh, in San Francisco, Grammy Award winning um, a mastering guy, uh did it for me. And he's one of those guys. Let me let me let me tell you what I knew. I I, I feel like we always had something. But the icing on the cake was when was when Dr. J said, "Okay, that's tight. If you were going for that old school vibe, if you were going for that old school feel, you nailed it." And this is the mastering guy who's gone, who's seen and done it all, and he's like a no nonsense like. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but he he heard it and he said, "Okay, I like that." And mm. he, I said, "You know what? Drop the mic." Yeah. Hello. That dropped the mic. We we all thought it was good, but hit him was just the cherry on the top. So we're looking at the dance. We are uh, looking at having a dance challenge also, and uh, it's going to be released everywhere on all. Like I said, all the digital platforms, and you know, for all those people out there who you know who through your people and through your followers or mine. If you go to Zamil's for Jazz Experience on Instagram. Uh, Zamil's for Jazz on Instagram, Zamil's for Jazz Experience on Facebook, and Zamil's for Jazz on TikTok. You know, that's where I'll be dropping most of the stuff. I'm not, you know, I got to get to TikTok because most of my demographics are Facebook. <laughs> Models come in, right? And this is a funny story. This is an absolutely true story. That's <clears throat> I come in on last week, and we were, because we also got some merch, right? We got t shirts mm -hmm. and things coming out. And, uh, I was having the models. I said, well, okay, follow me on Facebook. And they were like, what is face Facebook? <laughs> it was like, oh, man, is that telling who I am? But uh, Zamil's for Jazz Experience on Facebook, Zamil's for Jazz on TikTok and Instagram. And so I got to get more into this whole what you're doing because that is the one thing that, it, you know, when I look back on the journey, we focused so very much on the content of the music, the quality of the music. Like when you hear what we do, it's mixed, it's mastered down to the, I mean, you know, you go here, stir it up. You go 
come along and roll with me from the time the CD. Just listen to, you know, Joel on, on uh, I Did It For Our Love, and he's playing those keys on I Did It For Our Love. And on Intimate Pleasures, there's a cut, had a, you know, live acoustic guitar. Mm. Spanish Rain. It's on Intimate Pleasures, and Zamil's Essential Smooth Jazz is called Spanish Rain. We took our time, I took my time with wanting to perfect the music, whereas the younger generation, you know, it's all about the following. And so now that that's where I'm now. I'm, I'm there. Is, so we don't have the, the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers because we focus more on the quality of the music and selling out the shows locally. Now oh. I have retired. I retired last year. Now that I have retired, my focus is going to be taking the Meals for Jazz experience global. And that's where people like you come in. And so, I, again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you sharing, you know, me with your audience and uh, what it is that we do because it's a growing and sexy vibe. You know, everything we do is a growing and sexy vibe. And, and the music and the words and whether it's, whether it's the love, whether it's the romance, whether it's inspiration, whether it's, whether it's something to jam to. It, it, if you find it, it's, it's a, if you took Love Jones, the movie mm -hmm. Love Jones. I love that movie. And you you know the 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 spoken word that they did and you you know at turned it up a lot or two in terms of overall uh presentation about what it do uh, about what it did and what it does to how you feel that's where we are mm, mm, man listen hello you cooking right now z you cooking now one thing you gotta understand because we are a community us creatives are a community and if we don't support each other, we will all, I mean, listen, we all are trying to work towards getting exposure, getting heard, because people need to hear good music. And sometimes not the best music is the popular music. So um, for everybody else who is looking for something dope to listen to, look at, we got to make it accessible. And that's why I didn't do this platform is to say, hey, man, maybe I'll check this guy out. Let me listen. You know what I mean? And one listener turns to 10, 10 turns to 20. And then it just grows and grows from there, man. So definitely thank you for uh, being on my platform, my guy. Definitely. Man, no, I, yeah, I really, really appreciate that. And again, a uh, shout out to Desiree for working hard. And, uh, you know, uh, shout out to one of our prayer goes up to one of our clients. So we got to keep her and, and our friends and our clients uh, in, in, in prayer and lift it up for a couple of things. And so, but no, we have to, we have to support one, one another you know, and each other. And that's something that I'm going to push tremendously uh, in the upcoming year uh, with a, a play that I'm doing. I'm doing a play, a one-man play on February 18th with the Irving Black Arts Council at the Irving Arts Center. And uh, I'm going to talk about Black History, and it's for Black History Month. And, Hello. But I'm going to talk about Black History. I'm, not, I'm going to talk about the, the good, the bad, and, the, and, the, and how we hang in from trees and that part of it. But I'm also going to dive into, uh, I'm going to dive a lot into what we have done for this country, right? The, the contributions that we have done, the, the little known history that we have done. And we are an incredibly gifted, talented, blessed, courageous, and tremendous group of people. And, and we need people like you to continue to tell that story, that narrative, because as you know, Scott Heron, you know, his story mm -hmm. is not right. That's right. He did. He is, is, and so when we tell our story, it, it's a different, it's a different deal. It's a different outcome. It's a different dynamic. It's a different history. It's a different uh, majesty attached to, you know, what it is that we've done. And so, uh, I aim to touch on that on February 18th at the Irving Arts Center with the Irving Black Arts Council. So I'm going to tap into that. I'm going to tap into us. Hello, hello. Make sure y'all tap into my guy because he's going to bring it. Bring it. Listen, y'all get y'all tickets. Go ahead over to his page, man, and get the tickets. Now let now let me ask you this. Why did you choose jazz? What, like, you know what I mean? Now, did you do any R&B at all? Did you do any, you know what I mean? that lane and uh and then yeah let's let's talk about this pizzazz as well before we get to you know we got a few more minutes before we get to the closing um i chose jazz 
uh, jazz is kind of like the basis because of the groove and the way the words and how the melodies fit and what I was saying. So that it just, you know, it, it, it just felt, it just felt right. You know, shut down the computer. It's time to leave work. About to hit the town and put happy hour on the look. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like that it just kind of went with it. Uh, I did do some R&B and there's some R&B on each one of the songs, you know, uh, Ricky James did a, a song for me on the Intimate Pleasure CD called So Smooth. You can check that out, you know. On every album, there is not one song that's exactly the same. There are 12 different songs, but they're all cohesive. And so that's how I like to perform. And I did some DJing back in the day. And like I said, there's not one thing. So Zamil, which means joyous melodies in Hebrew, Zamil is not just, it's, it's, you just can't say, okay, he's just this. So there's some R&B in there. There's some smooth jazz in there. Again, there's a word in there. There's a little riff of blue. There's a real uh, song in there uh, on the Timeless CD and in the show called Catwoman. It's got a kind of a blues riff to it and have a, it has all the girls saying meow. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, well, I got a few questions for you, man. I got a few questions for you. Um, so so I, since you are, you know, since you're a writer, I want to know in no particular order, who are your top five writers? And it don't matter if it's music, literature, um, just who would you say would be your top five writers? Um, I would say that number one for me was Stevie Wonder. I think that, you know, Stevie Wonder, and his writing and his and his lyrical, uh, uh, you know, prose was just unbelievable. I think that uh, Dunbar was unbelievable. Uh, I think that uh, you know Quincy Jones was 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 un was unbelievable. Um, there are, there are a lot of them. I like I like George Benson. I like George Duke. I like Najee. Uh, so I they just think that you know. Uh, no, there are a lot of them out there, and it's just hard to say from one to five which which would they be. But I would say if you had to pin me down, I would say again Stevie Wonder. I go back to him a lot because of the range of. If you go listen to songs in the key of life, and you go one of my favorite albums. You go to uh, you know back from when he was young, and you know little Stevie Wonder, and you go and you look at that whole entire body of work man and you think about lyrically what he wrote as well as instrumentally wrote what he wrote That's you know you know the same can be said with prince the same that could be said with with, with with michael jackson you know they were all phenomenal you know but for me for me in my time in my life my my number one is stevie Wonder. hello man listen stevie's that guy I'm telling you, he's that guy. He is, man, he's amazing. So you, I got to, <laughs> you know, come so on. So many. As, that's one of my favorite yeah. songs of all times, man. So, you know. you know, hello. Yeah, man, it's just not. Come on, we can just keep running them off. We can just keep running them yeah, off. Yeah. There's so many. It's never <laughs> Whole show just to listen, you know. Just folks. to listen, Stevie, man, and yeah. and so yes, man. Shout out to to Mr. Wonder, man. Definitely a big inspiration of mine. So okay, all right. Well, let's let's talk about let's transition over to singers. Let's talk about your top five singers. Um, and and like I said, I know it's a lot. I know it's you know it's a lot, but if, you know I'm just trying to get like who you listen to, who you know what I mean, who who might be a little inspiration for you. Will Downey. Jeez. Will Downing, major inspiration to everything that I do. Will Downing, Barry White, Jeffrey Osborne, John, uh, George Benson, Stevie, Luther Vandross. Mm. Man, those some, whew, those some fires. <laughs> that worked for that. That was just like. <laughs> I know. You, you those not. Just, like, I was insane, dude. All those like. That's all in my rotation, like right now. <laughs> Hello. No, that's that's it. Now, now listen, I heard you do some bars. I heard you was doing some bars over there. Now let's let's talk about now. Do you dabble? Do you do you got a little five rappers? Do you, you do you need a little rapping? You know what? I real quick, I used to really sing. 
I was never Will Downing or never really Barry Wright, but I, I, I was singing. I had a surgery on my throat that um, caused, caused me a lot of issues some years ago. And quite frankly, I did not recover or rehab myself the way I should have in terms of getting back to that space I was prior to that surgery. However, because I had the gift of words and rhymes, that's why the poetry comes so easy because I'm really like a lyrical poet. And so the, the rhythm and the rhyme, you know, you know, rap and, and all those kind of things. So yes, there's a part in, in me that's in there. And there's a part of me that, you know, that, that all of that's in there. Mm -hmm. But the basis of it, it all, everything starts with a song. And that's what makes the music, that's what makes the music different. I even did a little, little bit of rapping, a little bit of rap on, uh, on the show, on the Zamil Z Jazz Experience. And it was so... Uh, terrifying because I had never done it before. <laughs> Not like terrifying like I was here, but even a lot of the people who were there, they were shocked because I had never went there before. And it was just, and I was putting it together, touching your soul where your heart can listen and giving you everything that you're missing to light up the mic with the verses or tiger be telling your moves they can do what they like. You see what I'm saying? So, that, I knew you had the flow. I knew you had the flow. You know, I knew it. <laughs> so, it's in me, but you know, you know, part of it is, um, again, when I, when I do a show, I want to give you some of everything. And I don't even stay, I don't even stay in the same register in every song, on every, on every cut. You know, you know, one, one song, you know, will be, one song I may, I may be here. You know, this song is, you know, you know, if you were a fountain, I would drink from your well until lungs became, yeah, yeah, I would, I would be there. And then, you know, stir. and this groove is for those old school people, you know, like from back in the day, we're talking about clubs like Studio 67 and RJ's by the lake, you know, that's stir it up. That's just, it. so I want you to, I, I, I don't want, I don't want the monotone thing. I want, I want, uh, I'm driven to give you a little bit of everything in that whole in that whole session in that whole time that we're together so we you know we keep it moving we keep the flow we're gonna be serious we're gonna have some fun we're gonna crack some jokes you know and this is it's, 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 it's gonna be live and so i try to give you all of that so to your point yes that's in me but it's something that i, I just dabble with yeah that's now I, I heard you when you was talking when you was doing your prompt form earlier i said he's all like, he can flow over there Maybe see if he got a little rapping in there so i knew yeah, i was yeah. right i knew i was yeah. I'm a producer. I'm a producer. So I love, I'm going to get you in the I room. got the gift. I'm, I'm waiting to hear you drop some lines on them right there. Before. <laughs> no, no. I know it's in you. No, no, no. You are the man with the words. So um, this is a great transition point. Can you give us a little bit of something? You can take one minute, two minutes. Like, can you give us a little, some words? Just whatever comes, whatever's in your heart, whatever comes to mind. Can you drop us a couple of lines? They See, there go my bars right there. I will, you know, I would, I would simply, I would, I would drop this, that in every life, not necessarily a, you know, a poem or drop some line, but just allow me to say this. We as a group of people, we are an, an incredible, uh, we are incredibly challenged every single day. But I, I spoke earlier to you about uh, the majesty of black man. And then also we need to talk about the majesty of our sisters, because I have said to our sisters, kinetically, symmetrically, you are amazing. The Commodore said that you were three times a lady, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Larry Graham said that you're one in a million. You know, Anthony Hamilton couldn't, he couldn't even, he couldn't even hold it, he had to confess to himself, he can't let you go. And Lenny Williams, he didn't know what to say and how to put all the things together about everything that you were. So he just simply screamed, oh, 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 oh. Ladies, if, if before words became a language, attempts to describe your aura had been met with anguish, not even dictionary and listen adequate enough vocabulary to connect the cerebral and the pulmonary with the projection of your image that simply to me is extraordinary. You are the ink that fills my pen 
my Twitter feed streaming live on Facebook and LinkedIn. My favorite emoji who you leak, he knows me. You are the thread and the garments that clothe. Look, I, I can't even say now. All the hearts, I just see the hearts going crazy. The hearts going crazy right now. Hello. And for, for my sisters, if you, for the love, I'm fractured and fragmented and made of tarnished pieces, brittle patience with low tolerance adjacent. No time for foolery and cautious with all things new to me. My faults have walked in deserts I thought were barren of scope until you uncloak the misery, of, the mystery of my misery as I thought only God saw the best in me. And for those sisters on the, on the, on the late side night, for, for the brothers on the late side, I would tell them on the show that Batman nor Superman would not stand a chance to the fire of your caress and your all hypnotic glance. I would do battle with Captain America, Iron Man, and the Hulk because I have become a cosmic love star slave to your sucking untouched. You are my kryptonite. Sheesh, that was good. That was good. Ooh, that was fire. That was fire. I'm still in that. I'm never letting you know. I'm, I'm going back and watch the replay, and I'm still in that. So I'm just letting you know that now. So all of that was, all of that was like six different pieces from you know seven different poems. So thank you for the opportunity because I always that's that's always a beautiful challenge because. When you do it, you know, as an artist, right? You know, as a producer, it's always you challenge yourself. And sometimes I challenge, I challenge myself on the mic in front of a couple hundred people. And you got 10,000 people who are following you and you got all these people. So it was really cool. Thank you for that opportunity. But those, for those who don't know, that was, that was like excerpts from nine different poems that I just let come to my head. Because you never know what the next word is going to be, right? Mm -hmm. You perform it. When you when you're not just doing when you freestyle, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. flowing, you don't know what the next word is going to be. So in that moment here, I didn't know what the next word was going to be, but I just I just went with whatever thought came to my head, and it was it ended up being nine different pieces. It's covenant. It was kryptonite. It was uh, you are. It was you know just just yeah. It's about seven different pieces, and I just some lines so i thank god for that blessing chief that was fire that was fire my guy i was i mean i'm listening like man 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 like damn that's deep you were saying some deep shit. i mean i only cut the options of deep words and, and and i would be remiss if i didn't leave it this this is for the, for the fellas i the, the last thing and I don't want to hold you much longer but i gotta say this to this fellas the last thing i said to my brothers I said that you are the proliferation of strength, drive, and determination, right? That your courage, strength, and, and resolve, many have tried to bury, but they don't realize we are the seeds of God and believers know not to worry. For all that you have done and for all the times the world said that you couldn't, but you said that I can. There's majesty in the moment of black man stands. So there it is. Chief, my God, bro, I can't wait this man. Listen, I'm gonna send you my info. I need the book. I need the <laughs> I need the college book. Send me the old college books too, my guys. Send me that too. <laughs> That's a good let, me, let me get <laughs> let me get some of them old player college books. I know you was talking that talk. Back oh, too, oh, <laughs> you know, back in the day, it was from a different place. It was, you know, you was, you know, I, you know, this is what, this is what I'm gonna do. And this is, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I already know, my God. <laughs> that's blackmail stuff right now, bro. I can't see. We cool. Oh, <laughs> good, but I can't well, see. You. I can't blackmail you like that, my God. Nah, no, you good. You gotta keep keep that oh. in the safe. Keep that in the safe. It's in the dude. This in the safe. Under the pantry, in the <laughs> down where the molten rock is, down there. This is <laughs> buried, buried. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Well, man, Z, this has been a super, super dope interview, man. Thank you so much for your time. I just want to have you go ahead because you are a man with some of you know how to use your words. So 
for your final word, what do you want to tell the people out there? What motivation you want to give? Um, what you know, what's what, what's something you want to leave the the viewers with now? May you always see the light to help you find your way. May you never know the hunger of a hopeless and darkened day. And when the clouds arrive, I pray you the strength and the will to survive. And when the storms are past, I pray your joy will always last. May you face the winter cold, knowing that there soon comes the spring. May you see beauty in all that exists, even the common and very little things. And when the world has you cornered and your back is up against the wall, you fight to forge ahead, you may stumble. But don't you ever fall. May you always see life as a chance to grow and to heal. So when it's time for that blissful rest, we shall celebrate how you live. Mm. I am the Jeez, my guy, jeez, hello, 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 my guy. So lastly, man, tell them where to find you. Tell them about the, sing the name of the single again when we get up out of here. Zamil's for Jazz Experience on Facebook, Zamil's for Jazz on Instagram and TikTok. All things Zamil on the website is zamil.com. And the new single is Stir It Up, an old school vibe. We're going to do a Stir It Up dance. We want to make sure we see, we want to see how you do it. We're going to do a challenge. And uh, it's an old school vibe and it's funky and it's something that just makes you feel good. You're going to be happy. We're going to stir it up. I'm going to introduce you to a character called Uncle T. Uncle T going to throw a couple words in there. He's going to eat a bunch of dish word in there. He's going to do a little something, something. He's going to put that in there. Zamil's for Jazz Experience. It's going to be on all the digital platforms from Apple, iTunes, uh, Amazon, uh, YouTube Music, uh, all, all, all of them that are that are out there. So it's it's it, stir it up will be it. Samil, stir it up December fifteenth, Friday. Go get it. Let's make this hot. Let's make it happen. And thank you all out there. I want to thank you for uh, your you know just just again your platform. Thank your listeners and your audience for allowing me to share this space with you. And uh, again, uh, thanks to all of my friends and fans and my pro jazzers that follow me. And uh, Desiree, who hooked this up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, man, thank you, brother, for your words. You you inspired me just by this, this. Even though we haven't even spent a long time together, just in this short amount of time, those poems and those words um, resonated with me. And I'm glad we had this moment, my guy, because I'm telling you, I'm definitely gonna go back and watch this because I still I know I missed something because he was cooking so much. So I'm gonna go back and listen again because that's the kind of person I am. If I feel like I missed it, I said, hold on, I gotta go back in. Because I know he said something that I should have, you know what I'm saying? I heard it, but I didn't hear it. You know what I mean? So uh, thank you again, brother. Oh man, absolutely. We get together and you know, I gotta hear some of your stuff now. You gotta- Yes, gotta, sir. Uh, we'll, uh, we locked make... in now, we locked in now. Yeah, we locked in now, dude. It's all in popping. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So again, thank you again to Desiree, man. She has some dope clients. Thank you again. This has been another edition of the Rolf Talk Podcast. And again, go over to YouTube and look up Rolf Talk Podcast. Check out my other podcasts that I've had in the past. I got some more coming up in the near future. But again, this podcast will be up on the YouTube very soon. So make sure you check us out. And man, again, Hey, thank you again, my guy. I'm going to check out Stir It Up dropping this Friday. And everybody out there, y'all be safe. Y'all be blessed. And we out. Peace. Deuces.